Our talk this evening is, yes, all about willow or wicker, as it's sometimes known, coffins. So essentially, we'll be talking about how we make them, why we make them, and how willow coffins can maybe bring us closer to talking about death, dying, and dealing with grief. People have been using plants to weave with for thousands of years. Things like vine and brambles, uh, wood like oak, ash, hazel, rush, even bark. Now, some of the oldest human artifacts found have been made out of willow and the oldest known baskets carbon date back to about 10,000 years ago. So willow is a tree native to much of the northern hemisphere and it grows wild everywhere across the UK. It has a voracious appetite to grow and can sometimes feel like an invasive species because of this. It's also pretty unique in that you can cut a branch off in the winter, stick it in the ground, and as long as there's enough water around, it will grow. Most of you will probably know willow as a fully grown tree, but in order to produce willow rods suitable for making baskets, lengths of willow called sets are planted in the ground and then produce multiple stems which are cut each year such as the ones on the right. Some varieties of willow can grow up to 10 feet in a year. So what I love about working with willow is the fact that I can be involved in every step of the process. I can plant it, I can harvest it, I can prepare it, I can use it, and I can deal with the waste product. It's amazing. And I also really love the simplicity of using just my hands and a very few tools to produce things that are both beautiful and functional. About six years ago, my auntie Rosie died and wanted to be buried in a willow coffin. Kaz and my mum and other aunts spent two days with the coffin maker helping to weave Rosie's coffin. And this sowed a seed in Kaz's mind. And so last year, we both did a willow coffin course with the intention of starting our own business, Wild Heart Coffins. So people often say to me, oh, but it seems like such a waste to spend so much time making something you're just going to bury or burn. But that is exactly the point for me to lovingly put time, care and skill into something that will accompany someone towards the very end of their physical life here on earth. I literally can't think of anything more special. So how do we make our coffins? Number one is planning. Willow is dried after it's harvested, so it needs to be soaked in order to be pliable enough for weaving. And depending on the type of willow, how big it is, whether it's got the bark on or off, this soaking can take anything from a couple of hours right through to a couple of weeks. So the way our coffins are made incorporates a solid wooden base. We're currently working with plywood. Holes are drilled into this so that we can insert the upright willow stakes, which form the structure of the main part of the coffin. So with these two materials coming together in this way and binding underneath, like the photo on the right, we can make a really solid and strong coffin. Once the stakes are in place, we can then start weaving the sides of the coffin. This is known as the upset. There are loads and loads of different types of weaves used in basketry, which come, which come from all over the world. And the main ones we use in our coffins are called whale, French rand and English rand. And here's Tom very nicely demonstrating a whale. So halfway up the sides of the coffin base, we incorporate a handle band. And for this, we buy in sizal rope, which is woven in amongst the willow to produce four really strong handles. For larger coffins, we just use slightly longer rope and, and we can extend to six handles, maybe three on either side. Our coffins can easily bear the weight of up to 20 stones. After more French rand and a few rounds of whaling, the border needs turning down. Because willow dries out over time, sometimes the stakes need re-soaking before the border can be done, which means putting the coffin back into the soaking tank upside down for a few hours. This stops the stakes from cracking and breaking when they're turned down. The coffin design we use as a solid wood centerpiece in the lid, and we use whatever wood I have in stock in my workshop, usually ash, oak or walnut. The rest of the lid is woven with willow until it fits snugly over the base, both the lid and the base are then finished off with a decorative plait border. So to finish the coffin off, we use either cotton cord and hand carved wooden toggles like this photo on the left, or willow ties and rods, and that secures the lid to the base. The coffin is finally completed with an unbleached calico liner and mattress filled with organic hay cut from our farm here in Warwickshire. So after Rosie died, we invited friends and family to write on ribbons and send them to us so that we could weave them into her coffin. In this way, it felt like everyone who loved her in her life also played a special part in her death. It was incredibly moving and something that stayed with us and something we always offer to our coffin customers now too. 
So I believe that by being involved with as much of the funeral process as possible helps people to process grief. As such, we also offer people to come and weave some or all of their own or a loved one's coffin as an opportunity to help connect with and integrate our own death or the death of a loved one in a deeply personal way. I remember as a teenager finding my grandmother crying alone in her bedroom after my grandfather's funeral. I still remember how shocked and ashamed she looked, knowing that I'd seen her in this really vulnerable way, and we never spoke about it. We didn't know how, because talking directly about death is just not something we're taught how to do. Death can be really, really hard to talk about, especially in our modern Western culture, it seems. And yet it is the one human experience that is inevitable for us all. So as much as conversations around death can feel scary, uncomfortable, difficult, overwhelming and sad, they're really important and can actually be deeply unifying and connecting experiences. So we also believe it's really important to include children in our conversations as much as possible. We've got two daughters. Uh, they've become very accustomed to us talking about death now. What started off for them as really weird is now just kind of uh, accepted as normal. Um, here's our youngest, keen to try it out. One of our coffins from a photo sheet last year. Or, or is, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's frozen or. or... <laughs> That's definitely not our daughter sitting on top of a coffin in the shape of a willow heart. There, there she, she is. is. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's really important for us to have conversations with 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 everybody, but particularly our children. And as I say. Um, they did think it was quite weird and it's been really lovely to have conversations where they feel like it's more normal to engage with death and this was a bit of fun with her getting in the coffin when we were doing a photo shoot. So choosing a willow coffin and perhaps even helping to weave it yourself allows you to channel emotional energy into a physical creative activity, a cathartic process that helps us to connect in more with our feelings. It's also a really beautiful way to stay in closer connection with our loved ones, even after they're gone.